today we are going to present the topic minimization of dfas so these are our table of contents so firstly we'll speak about the introduction that's we'll define the dfas what actually dfas are and next we will move on to minimization of dfas we will look at various ways to minimize the dfa and lastly we will speak about equivalence theorem and myhill nerod theorem with few example first is the introduction so firstly let us see what actually a dfa is so this term dfa it expands to deterministic finite automata now one can determine that for which state upon giving which input it will go to which particular state so because of this feature it is called the deterministic and since there are a limited amount of states so that's why we call it a deterministic finite automata and this machine can read only one input symbol at a time if we give a string it will read one symbol at a time so in a dfa there is only one path for a specific input from the current state to the next state that means there cannot be multiple path for the same input now in a dfa we have to compulsorily give some input like it cannot accept a null move that is if we want to move one state from one state to the other then we have to give a move a null move is not accepted and finally a dfa can contain multiple final states and it is used in lexical analysis in compilers now let us come to some formal definitions of a dfa now how is a dfa defined formally a dfa is a collection of five tuples that are q q is a set of all states sigma sigma is a set of all inputs q not q not is the initial state capital f capital f is the final state and if there are multiple final states then capital f is the set of all those final states and this is del so del is a transition function it maps q cross sigma to q and we have already mentioned what q and sigma stand for and here is an example dfa so this dfa is a dfa that accepts all strings ending with 0 okay and the input symbols are 0 and 1 so now we have arrived at the topic minimization of a dfa so what does minimization of dfa mean if a minimization implies converting a given dfa into its equivalent dfa having minimum number of states now there are two techniques to minimize a dfa which are the equivalence theorem and the myhill nerod theorem now we will discuss the equivalence theorem first we see that there are two states two states a and b are set to be equivalent If they uh, if they recognize the same set of tokens, here we see two states A and B being fed the same input x, where x is an input string. Both of them, on getting x, give the output f. When x is zero, then A and B are said to be zero equivalent. When x is one, then A and B are said to be one equivalent. Similarly, if x is n, then A and B are said to be n equivalent. Now we look at the equivalence theorem in details. It states that if x and y are two states in a DFA, you can combine these two states into a single state x y if they are not distinguishable. Two states are distinguishable. There is at least one string x such that one of the states x and y is accepting and another is not. Hence, a DFA is minimal if and only if all the states are distinguishable. Now, to find the minimal minimal form of a DFA, we follow some basic steps, which are the first step involves in uh, dividing. All the states into two parts. One part contains the final states, and the other contains the non-final states, and are denoted by P0. All the states in a partition are zero equivalent. So now we take counter k and initialize it with zero. The next step would be to increment k by one. For each partition in P of k, we divide the states in P k into two partitions if they are k distinguishable. Two states within this partition x and y are k distinguishable. If there is an input s such that del x of s and del y s are k minus one distinguished. Now the next step would be to check whether p of k is if not equal to p of k minus one or not. If it is true, then we go back to step two. Otherwise, we proceed to step four, which tells us to combine the k-th equivalent sets and make them the new states of a reduced DFA. So to understand it fully, we take the help of an example. Here we have a DFA having multiple final states where C, D, and E are the final states, and A, B, and F are the non-final states, and the inputs are zero and one. First, we draw the transition, and here the inputs have the initial states have been mentioned, and the inputs have been mentioned. For state A, on input zero, it goes to B, and on one, it goes to C. For B, for input zero, it goes to A. For input one, it goes to D. For C, for states C, E, and E, for input zero, all of them travel to And for input one, all of them travel to state F, whereas the state F 
or input 0 and 1 will go to F itself. Now we proceed to find the minimal point of this zero. We apply the above function steps. First of all, define the zero equivalent. For that, we will partition those two steps into two sets. One set consists of the final states, which in this case is C, D, and E, and the other set consists of the non final states, which are A, B, and F in this case. Next, our step would be to find the one equivalent step. For that, we need to use the rule of the zero equivalence. First, we check for A and B. For that, we find that A and B for input 0 have the output in the same state. Hence, and for our input 1, again, they would be in the same state. Hence, A and B are one, are one equivalent to each other. However, if we check for B and F, for them, their outputs will not be in the same set. Hence, they are separated. A and B are one equivalent to each other, whereas F is not. Similarly, for C, D and E, they are one equivalent to each other. Next, we proceed to find the two equivalent. Now we find that C, D and E are two equivalent to each other as well, as well as A and B are also equivalent to each other, and F is by itself. On further observation, we find that one equivalent and two equivalent are same. Hence, we can conclude that we have reached our minimal form, the DFA, where it consists of three states, A, B coupled together to form one state, which on input 0 goes to A, B, on input 1 goes to C, D, E. Next, the state is C, D, E, which has been coupled to form one state. On input 0, it goes to C, D, E, on input 1, it goes to F. Similarly, F on input 0 and 1 goes to F itself. And here is a minimized DFA having three states, as mentioned, A, B as one state, F as the one state, and C, D, E as the final state. A, B is the starting state, and F is the other non-final state. Here, we take the help of another example, which also consists of multiple final states, where C, B, and G are the final states, A, D, E, F are the non-final states. A is the starting state. However, if you look closely, F is an unreachable state. And so, to find the minimized form, we first need to remove f. We discredit the state f and we construct the transition table. So, here we see the state f has not been included, only states a, b, c, d, e, g has been included and the respective outputs for inputs 0 and 1 have been shown. Again, we proceed to find the minimized form of a DFA for this example. And we start with zero equivalence, wherein we divide the states into two parts. One part consists of the final states, which are B, C, G in this case, and the other set consists of the non-final states, which are A, D, and E in this case. Next, we go for the one equivalence set, which takes the help of the row of the zero equivalence, and we find that B and C are one equivalent to each other, whereas C and G are not. Hence, B, C are written together and G is by itself. Similarly, A, D and E are one equivalent to each other. Next, we go for two equivalents. We find that B, C are two equivalent to each other too and G is by itself. Also, D and E are two equivalent to each other but A and D is not. Hence, A is separated and D and E is written together. Next, we find the three equivalent step. And here we find that it is same as two equivalents, and thus we can again conclude that we have reached our minimized form. And here is the table which consists of four states A, D, E coupled together, B, C coupled together, and G. Now A on input 0 goes to B, C, on input 1 goes to B, C. D, E on input 0 goes to G, on input 1 goes to G. B, C on input 0 and 1 goes to D, and G on input 0 and 1 goes to G itself. So, here is the minimized DFA with uh, four states where A is the starting state, B, C, and G are the final states, D, E is the other. And now I will want to continue with the Mihal Nerot theorem, which is another great method to minimize a given DFA. Now, in order to minimize a DFA using the Mihal Nerot theorem or the table filling method, we need to follow certain steps, which are as follows. So, firstly, we will draw a table for all those pairs of states P, Q and 
we have to mark only those pairs such that p is a final state and q is a non final state or q is a final state and p is a non final state so we'll mark all those pairs now in the third step we need to mark some additional pairs which are delta p comma x and delta q comma x which means the state where p goes on getting the input x and the state where q goes on getting the same input x and now if that particular pair is marked in the table then we need to mark p comma q so these additional markings are to be made and this process needs to get repeated until no more markings can be made and finally we will combine all the unmarked pairs and make them a single state in the minimized dfa so here we have considered an example we have also looked upon this example in the equivalence theorem method so now we will see whether we can minimize the given dfa using mihal neuroth theorem or not in the solution first we have constructed this table of all pairs of states so we have six states total 36 blocks and we have executed the upper triangular half because that is just a repetition so we need not consider it so we will deal with only the lower triangular half now here we will mark all the state pairs such that p is a final state and q is a non final state so can we see the markings yeah so these are all the pairs where p is a final state and q is a non final state yes now we will make few additional markings so we can see that in the pair a comma f the state a on getting input 1 it goes to c and the state f on getting input 1 is it goes to f itself so we will see whether c comma f is marked or not yes c comma f is marked so we need to mark a comma f also for the pair b comma f we will see that b on getting the input 1 it goes to d and f on getting input 1 it goes to f itself marked or not now yes d comma f is marked so we will also mark b comma f so these two blocks we have marked and we have checked that no other block can be marked so we have reached the end of the markings yeah in the final step we need to combine all the unmarked pairs so the unmarked pairs we have got are a comma b c comma d c comma e and d comma e so these are the four unmarked pairs now among the four c comma d c comma e and d comma e these three can be combined into one single state that is c comma d comma e and a comma b will leave as it is so in the final final minimized dfa we will con we will see that it has got three states that are f a comma b and c comma d comma e and here is the diagram as in the initial dfa we had got c d and e as the final state so in the minimized dfa this uh, combination of c d and e it will be the final state this will be non final states and the transitions are also made accordingly so that was the minimized dfa now now we'll look into another example so here is the given dfa with one final state e and the rest are non final states we will try to minimize it using the mihal neuroth theorem so again we draw a table for all the pairs p comma q and uh, we mark those pairs where p is a final state and q is a non final state so as we see that e is a final state and the rest all are non final states so all the pairs combined with e we have to mark all those blocks so we have accordingly marked them in this table now we will have to mark the additional pairs so we have examined when we have seen that all the pairs except a comma c can be marked according to the um, theory algorithm so a comma c is the only unmarked pair from this final table okay the next step yeah so we have seen that a comma c is the only unmarked pair and the remaining states are b d and e so total we have got four states in the minimized dfa that are a comma c b d and e and since in the initial dfa we have got e as the final state so in the minimized dfa also e will be the final state and the rest will be non final states and the transitions are made according to the initial dfa only and so these are the transitions and thank you very good presentation uh, one thing i must tell you that uh, this onil nerod is the mahil nerod nerod is a indian that is number one that you should be proud of